Welcome back, everybody. Neil here with Plant Source. Uh, welcome to the weekly source again, our Eclipse edition. My guest today, Brad Knox, SVP and counsel at Aflac, just got off the stage, so we're getting you right into it. So yeah. I appreciate you uh, you coming out and speaking to us a bit about what's going on in, in DC. Sure. Um, Thanks for having me. You bet. You bet. Thanks for joining us. So give us. I mean, gosh, the, the timeline, the health policy timeline of the last couple of years, you just did a quick summary. But I guess in, in 2019, a, a quick update, the big things that are, are happening and then kind of what to look for in the next year or so. Well, I think um, what what you'll see, what has happened already, even just in the last couple of months, is the president's executive order to lower, uh, to create more transparency around pricing. And that's a consumer focused um, effort. And then you have uh, the Senate uh, working on a bill that actually is designed to drive not only price transparency, but drive price down and create competition. And that's a bipartisan effort. It's one of the few bipartisan efforts that's happening in Congress right now. Sure. Uh, and, and then you've got a, a new rules that allow for um, health reimbursement arrangements to be used for both in the individual market as well uh, with the accepted benefit, uh, an accepted benefit HRA that's supposed to, that should be um, more flexible for people to use and have, in theory, more access to health coverage. Sure. I mean, you covered a lot in, in the HPs, STLDIs, I mean, all, all the acronyms, right, that our, our right. consumers are like, what, what the heck's going on? But I think top of mind, like when you, when you log in and you see the news, it's Medicare for all, right? And you, mm -hmm. I think you made a comment, it's an easy conversation to have. So I guess from DC's perspective on Medicare for all, where does that stand today and, and kind of what should we look out for as voters and consumers? I think the, the question um, voters and consumers should ask about that, and, and I'll step back. Medicare for all, the idea is still, it's still about making sure people have access to coverage. Most people have it through their employer um, or Medicaid or Medicare. So we're talking roughly um, some numbers, 11 million Americans okay. that don't have coverage. So the idea of Medicare for all resonates that, yes, everyone knows Medicare and people have no people that, um, you know, their parents or themselves who have used it and they like it. The, the challenge is Medicare itself is financially not sustainable. Sure. And, and so until Congress does something to fix the financing of Medicare, it makes it difficult to figure out how are you going to make it available for all. So I think for me, my, my, my position is um, voters and, and um, you know, just your average person should be asking how we're going to pay for that. Sure, the details, right? You said what are the yeah, details? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is a fair question to ask, right? I, I yeah. think it's a fair question to sure, ask. Sure, sure. Um, and the other one was paid family leave, right? You said that that is almost a more pressing issue or topic uh, that isn't maybe getting as much press at, as the others, right? I think that I think that's right. Yeah. Um, and, and you've got uh, Republicans and Democrats both want to see something with paid family leave, both sure. at the federal level and the state level. The question is, how do you go about doing it? Um, and there are concerns from employers about how to make sure we have the right guardrail so that it doesn't get abused, but we take care of people because the thing that employers want is to reduce as much stress when there's a family issue. And so how do you do that in a, in a way that they can take care of their family and still know that they've got um, financial security? Sure. Uh, and so the Democrats want to do it through a national plan, through uh, a mandate, which would be more taxes, and the Republicans want to use a tax incentive. It's the old, it's the old debate between sure. the, the, the the parties how to fund it, uh, but it is something that will be a continuing talking point, and I think you're going to see more um, discussions about it at the state. I think the states are going to be driving this policy gotcha. more than the federal government. Makes sense. I mean, and we were just talking before politics historically a, a taboo discussion, but we we've had two presentations now about how we're moving into the digital age, right. conversations are spilling over into Twitter, mm -hmm. and these conversations are just happening real time. So I thought you did an awesome job of navigating, getting on stage, talking politics, saying what's happening, and, right. and I think you uh, won over everybody. So it's really cool, really cool to sit <laughs> well, there and learn you know, what's going on in, in DC, so appreciate that. Yeah, I think it was fun, lots of fun. It was a great audience too. Yeah, yeah we got a little more celebration to do tonight at Eclipse. Uh, last question for you, I did a little research. No, um, you're from Oral Roberts, Tulsa, Oklahoma. So thumbs up or thumbs down on chicken fried steak? Uh, two thumbs up on chicken fried <laughs> steak. 
Absolutely. Yeah, apparently it originated there, which <laughs> might have been news to you. But, that was uh, news to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what we do here. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate you one stopping by uh, for the weekly source. Thank you for presenting. Yes. Um, and for folks watching this at home, thank you for tuning in to the weekly, uh, weekly source, and we will see you next time. Thanks again, Brad. Thank you.